It has many names. It works at the highest levels of combat sports. It is a submission. It can injure the elbow, humerus, and shoulder. It ends matches and tweaks arms every day in jujitsu classes. It is the Americana submission. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon, black belt in jujitsu, and I am bridging the world of orthopedic surgery and combat sports. If you have a particular interest in a topic, please let me know in the comments section below. As always, if you like this, please share with your friends, subscribe, and gently apply pressure to the like button. This video should be seen as a continuation of my recent Kimura video. Please check it out if you have not yet done so. You should also check out my video on arm bars, specifically the one on Jacare Sousa and how he broke his arm in the UFC. It was from a similar type of submission as the Americana. So we will be talking about the Americana submission, also known as double wrist lock or key lock, what it looks like, the anatomy involved, with an introduction to something called the glenoid labrum, which is important for shoulder stability and a commonly injured structure, possible injuries if you do not tap soon enough. All right, so the Americana submission, another arm twisting submission like the Kimura, except it is kind of the opposite. Similar to the Kimura, the opponent's arm is trapped, usually by the attacker's two arms, with the elbow held in a 90 degree angle, creating a crank. Yes, there are exceptions. The biggest difference from the Kimura is that the shoulder is rotated externally as opposed to internally. Due to the shoulder joint's unique high range of motion, the shoulder position greatly influences what structures fail. Another difference from the Kimura is the position of the forearm. Instead of being pronated, it is often neutral or supinated. The importance of this latter part was nailed down in my Kimura video. A little refresher on the anatomy. The shoulder is this golf ball on a tee type of joint with a lot of range of motion. The humerus bone makes a joint with the glenoid part of the shoulder blade or scapula. The scapula is an interesting bone as it just floats along the rib cage and its position greatly affects the motion of the shoulder joint itself. The position of our thoracic spine, the part of our spine between our necks and our lower backs, is what our rib cage attaches to. It also influences shoulder motion through the scapula. The glenoid portion of the scapula has a soft fibrocartilaginous structure completely surrounding the edge of it called the labrum. It acts as a O-ring or gasket. It supports and helps stabilize this somewhat shallow and unstable joint. Its function is very similar to what our menisci do for our knees. Check out that video when you can. The shoulder joint usually tolerates more external rotation compared to internal rotation, especially when the shoulder is held in an outward or abducted position. Some of this extra external rotation is lost as your arm comes closer to your side, adduction. You can go ahead and do it yourself. As the shoulder is lowered or adducted, tension on the shoulder ligaments will occur sooner and you'll lose some of external rotation. Additionally, with external rotation, the humeral head wants to translate forward within the glenoid. The ligaments in front of the shoulder joint can fail and the humeral head could keep going forwards out of the joint and dislocate. This could also cause a tear in the labrum as the humeral head shears against and or impacts it. At the elbow, the humerus makes joints with the radius and ulna. The joint with the ulna makes a hinge, flexes and extends. And the joint with the radius is one of rotation, supination to pronation. These joints are stabilized by ligaments, primarily on the inside and outside the elbow. The elbow does not rotate like the shoulder. With external twisting of the arm and the form in neutral or supinated, like the Americana, the inside elbow ligaments or ulnar collateral ligament is stressed and can be injured. Connecting the shoulder and the elbow is the humerus bone. 
This twisting force on the arm can certainly break the humerus. There are similar situations that can help demonstrate how external rotation on the arm can result in a broken humerus. These situations like arm wrestling or throwing baseballs or hand grenades are documented ways of this occurring. While these arm twisting submissions can be finished in many positions, it is most effective quicker to tension things when the opponent's scapula and thoracic spine are trapped. This locks the shoulder in much sooner. This control is classically achieved by sandwiching the opponent between your chest and the ground when across their side in a side mount. But can happen if the attacker's legs can engage and trap the upper body. So, to summarize, the injuries that can occur at the elbow, the ulnar collateral ligament, and or some of the forearm flexor tendons. Two, the humerus can break. And three, the shoulder. Ligaments can tear, the labrum can tear, and or the shoulder can dislocate. Which structure fails first will depend on a lot of factors, including your opponent's scapula and thoracic spine position, flexibility of their shoulder ligaments, the amount of shoulder abduction that is present, and how hard and far the crank can be turned. As always, be careful, understand the power of these positions, and get after it. Let's keep moving.